Brilliant. So just welcoming people into a uh, short notice session, really, um, as a follow on from our Wigan Time to Grow programme, um, partly to check in and see how people are doing, start to kick things off as we start to come out of the summer haze, uh, so-called summer haze. And um, there's quite a lot of new developments I wanted to get across to people if we can and create a conversation, picking up on a session we ran at the end of the first Wigan Time to Grow programme where we started to map ideas, plan, and um, some of the people on the call who were at that session um, and we thought we'd just talk into um, what's what. So um, before I get into what's happening, it'd be lovely to, to hear who's who. Um, I'm going to come to Anne first, if I may, just, um, and I can just stick it aside. Just eat your breakfast, that's not typical, isn't it? Sorry, <laughs> come back to you, but um, basically, on the Time to Grow programme, originally, we had about 22 women. Um, the majority of those uh, were funded through um, the WEA funding that we had at the time. The other half also were funded through NatWest. And we had a really good mix of different kinds of women from different backgrounds wanting to use and explore social entrepreneurship as a route into work, into developing social ventures, into making a difference. And the ventures that they developed span health and well-being, they spanned um, um, environmental stuff, they spanned supporting people, um, supporting women um, who get infected by domestic abuse, um, young people, mental well-being, you name it. There was all sorts of people that we supported. Um, we had somebody who um, was developing um, a belt in Wigan, was a, um, and still is, I don't know if she's joining us today, looking at um, helping people develop their marketing and media, um, we've got Northwest Accounts developing um, services, this SMEs and enterprises to improve their financial management, whatever they're running. So a real diverse range of both targeted community support and kind of practical business development stuff. And um, so we've got a really um, talented group of people who we've got now to keep supporting um, and we're going to keep connecting. And then we've got um, funding for a new program we will talk about in a minute. And we're hoping that over the next six to 12 months, we can um, weave, <laughs> weave the different communities together, both the people that we supported previously, the people who we're seeking to find, and um, that I'll talk about shortly on across a few programmes, and um, obviously connect into the wider social enterprise support networks and other, other things going on locally so that we can maximise resources, reach out to different people, offer some good um, opportunities for, for social entrepreneurs, local residents, and anyone else. So um, that was just a bit of a flavour of who's been on the programme before I come to Anne now, who can perhaps say, <laughs> give an example of somebody who's been on the programme. So you want to say hello, Anne? So, what, what, what Hi, everyone. I think I've met most people. Um, I'm Anne. I, I run Reiki Wellness Centre. I'm a holistic practitioner and wellness coach. I offer a complementary therapies including Reiki, EFT, mindfulness, meditation and I've recently added forest bathing to that. Um, so I've just over the summer I completed a diploma in forest bathing so I can now offer that. Good to know. And so uh, and I also run a community a cooperative really of holistic therapies called Wigan Wellness Web and um, that's just a group of therapists brought together because we want to offer things to people who maybe couldn't afford that themselves like individual sessions and um we've just been successful in getting a very small amount of money from the uh, deal for communities in wigan uh, and i'll be offering uh, we call it wellness in the woods which is a, a mini really? forest bathing um, around, yeah around the three sisters area we've um collaborating with hope school in the hamlet there so um that's going to start in September. As soon as the schools go back, we'll be setting that up and running that through September and October term. So Great news. Out of interest, how, how, what, do you mind, what was the value of the grant that you were able to get from the, the deal? Uh, £435, that's all really? tiny. No, but I mean, it'll get... But it's the, it, it will allow us to do something. I mean, it'll just cover the time for the, uh, the guides doing the walks, really. It right. won't cover all the prep time or anything else like that well, we, we, will. Can have a chat. we can have a chat around some sort of wider stuff there as well and wider opportunities so we'll pick up on that again and i'm just going to do an email then because there's a few people on our north manchester program currently 
linked to this topic around outdoor wellness and forest bathing and all these sorts of things and um i'll do it i'll do an e intro there so that you can pick up with them on that but actually as part of some of the health and well-being stuff we're going to talk about in a minute um all this ties in really well actually with some other stuff so that's great to hear um yeah. it's, been interesting. it's been an interesting summer good yeah and it's good to hear the developments and things moving along and um fantastic um Obviously, we've not got heaps of people off the programme on the call yet, and we'll just see who drops in as we go. And I'm not overly worried because I know people are still kind of dealing with summer holidays and um, we can map out who we think is going to be involved in certain things, even wow. though they're here. But before I come to Tracy in a second, just to give us a kind of bigger picture sort of perspective, because she's obviously linked in from um, sort of the council side, the Social Enterprise Network side, I was just going to ask Shelley if she might say hello and introduce herself. Um, Shelley's our new... Um, program development support coordinator um and obviously with a n- number of new programs starting i'm like yes uh-huh. <laughs> lovely to introduce her to a couple of people in wigan and just see some of what's planned as well that she's helping me develop and um, deliver over the next uh however many six twelve months and more hopefully <laughs> oh thanks to kayla uh yeah so i'm brand new to flourish i had my first official day on friday um a little bit about me, I've been working in and around social enterprise for, well, 10 to 15 years, um, lots of work in the uh, for purpose and not for profit sector. Most recently, for the last five years, I've been running a social enterprise myself, which was teaching children and young people digital information literacy. Um, COVID's been a really tra- challenging year for us because we work through schools um, and we decided a f- couple of months ago that we were going to wind up our operations um because the content that we were we were delivering it just isn't on the clip curriculum and it's not going to get on the curriculum for a while and so schools couldn't prioritize it so we took that decision and then this opportunity came up at flourish uh, which seemed absolutely spot on for me so i'm delighted to have joined and uh just from a couple of days working with michaela can see some of the incredible work being done and the fantastic social enterprises that flourish support so really very enthusiastic and excited to be here Fantastic. Thanks, Shelley. And I know you've dipped in and out of bits and pieces of Flourish stuff over the years. You've spent yeah. our events and attended a couple of things. So uh, whilst you're kind of new to the behind the scenes version of Flourish, uh, certainly not new to, to what we do and, and what, what, what works in this social enterprise world. Um, fantastic. Um, Tracy, do you want to say a, a hello and um, any updates from you and anything you want to sort of share or say before we get into some, some thinking? Yeah, um, I could do a bit, of, a bit of everything if you want. Um, <laughs> uh, so hi, Shelley. I've met Anne before, but hi, Shelley. Uh, my name's Tracy. Um, I'm the Community Funding Manager within the Deal for Community team at Working Council. Um, like you, I'm quite new to that, that role in, within the council structure. Um, I've been doing it for about four years now, I think, because originally I was part of uh, Wigan Borough Community Partnership, which was the VCSE infrastructure organisation. But like your organisation, unfortunately, it folded earlier this year. Um, so uh, the council pulled all the services back in within the Deal for Communities team, uh, which included my role. So luckily I could just carry on doing it as I was previously. And it's a bit different getting used to some of the different ways of working from going for a complete not-for-profit voluntary organisation to within the council structures. That was a bit strange to get kind of used to at first. Um, but it's nice being part of a team now as well because originally there was only three of us so now I'm in a team of about 15 so it, it's there's a lot more people around it so that's quite nice. Um, so in terms of kind of how I got involved with the kind of the, the flourish work and everything, um, whilst I was at the community partnership uh, we started working on a local access programme uh, which is a, a Greater Manchester programme where it's trying to encourage more routes to look at social investment as a, as a funding opportunity. Um, and as part of that, that programme, it's all about the development of the support structures around social enterprises. And so as well as like the social investment, there is a, like a development grant available as well to look at how we provide more support for social enterprises and what is it that Wigan need in particular. Uh, so along with Wigan, the Stockport, which obviously Joe was involved in, um, and we've got Oldham and Alton are the other two areas as well. So between the four of us, it is a Greater Manchester programme, but between the four of us, looking at specifically in our areas, how we can kind of put more support in place for social enterprises to help them grow and thrive. Um, so that's kind of how I got involved within the social enterprise side. 
Um, and then from the, the developments we've had so far, so we've managed to get a social enterprise network up and running. I think that started last November. I can't believe it's that long ago now already, but that started last November. Um, and we get about 30, 30-ish social enterprises attend every month. So it's it's kind of, it's grown to be something that's quite, it's the same people as well, which is good. So it's, it's going to be something that I feel that's quite important to social enterprises to have that networking opportunity in the borough. Um, so we do that every month. The next one is in this month, September. Um, and we're doing the kind of the focus for this one is to look at um, the purpose of the, the network and kind of go into a bit more of the governance side of it and locality are going to help us with that. And um, we've got the Coalfield Regeneration Trust are going to come and do some a presentation for us. We just pull in anyone. If anybody has any kind of issues, then we kind of tend to put that on the agenda. And um, so we, the, the social enterprise itself isn't owned by anybody. Um, and it's not. It's kind of the, the agenda is written by the social enterprises. What do they want to know more about? So we make sure it's really worthwhile for them. Um, and then we kind of just make sure that each each month it's relevant so that they can kind of get what they need to from that kind of opportunity to network. Uh, quite a few of the, the uh, ladies that attended the Time to Grow program have attended some of the social enterprise network meetings. And I know they have made really useful connections within that. So. Um, they do, they're on the mailing list and they do get the, the invites to go along to the, the network opportunity. Hopefully in the next few months we'll start getting back face to face because I think that's where the really like, genuine benefit comes from because um, like meeting people face to face when you're having a coffee is where all the good stuff happens. So hopefully we'll be able to get back to that in the next couple of months. Um, other things that are going on, we use the social enterprise network as a kind of co-design kind of element for our, some of the bigger projects that are going on across the borough and um, so we ask people what they think and kind of sense to check everything to make sure it's going to work um, loads of bits bits and pieces going on all over the place um, well, we can well, we can follow up with you again on that and there's you know, obviously a commitment to keep cascading and sharing stuff yeah. on various newsletters and things I think I'm certainly very keen where we can and clearly there's got to be you know processes and transparency and whatever else but um, with yourself with Dave, with potential resources through whether it be the council, the local access partnership, or anything else, flourish and, and our you know groups are very keen to look at how we can work in partnership with you guys. Potentially be commissioned to do stuff in future. We've obviously you know flown the flag and kept the fires burning and supported and developed seventeen new social ventures in the last year um, in spite of COVID. And um, we've just secured some WEA funding to run another time to grow program. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'll say a bit more about that in a second. So we're here, we've got a commitment to working in Wigan and we're, we're going great guns working with um, Claire and the team at Merrick Street who we're working in, in partnership with again this time. So um, so thank you, thank you for that. Um, all I was going to do here was a couple of things. I appreciate we're kind of a small group so there's only so far we'll get in some thinking but if I just explain kind of a little bit about what's going on and what's um, coming up, I thought we'd then get into a bit of a chat around some opportunities for um, co-designing some activities um, and we'll come back to the wider group around this and it's kind of, it will all evolve. So um, ignore that. But I've kind of nicked an old, an old slide here and just to try and illustrate what it is we're trying to do or what I was going to try and talk about. So really it was just an informal information and catch-up session. Um, I was going to talk about just a few programmes and opportunities that are live and coming up now um, just in case people weren't aware of them and then um, talk a bit about what's coming up what we hope to achieve with the new time to grow program and then think about what we said at that day where we mapped a bunch of ideas um, and think about how we might want to pick some of that stuff up and get moving with it and you know we, we don't rest on our laurels and we've already got dates and potential stuff ready to go and um, um, so there's an element of you know can we get people involved in, in what we know we want to run and then what do we want to do beyond that um, and things that we can sort of think about so just quickly programs we've got coming up um for anyone that wasn't aware we've got this ellie program so ellie um it's a program that we decided to run as a result of doing this consultation for the gmca the other year uh, like last year and we looked at the needs of the women's support sector and you know it wasn't a pretty picture and we thought rather than keep just running more time to go programs which which we will do why don't we focus one 
specifically the women's support sector. And I'm pleased to say we've already got applications from at least two of the um, people in Wigan who joined our programme. So there's a good chance um, Aishatu, um, Amore and um, Alice Coran will both come on the programme. Um, and I'm mentioning it now because there's room for more um, potentially. Um, we're looking for people who are running women's support organisations in the main. Um, so people who are setting up social enterprises or running sort of wider stuff. This, this is less focused for them. This is all about helping grassroots, medium to long term and kind of old stalwarts, kind of women's support sector organisations to better connect better um, support one another and think about how to improve their sort of business acumen, their leadership, their innovation and influencing skills and how we can create a bit more of a strength in numbers approach that's not at the mercy of whatever, funders, commissioning and other things and, um, you know, can achieve all sorts of stuff. So there's a whole programme designed for this. It's kicking off towards the end of September, beginning of October. Deadline for expressions of interest on this is technically the 8th of September. There's a bit of wriggle room around that. Um, and I have sent information out, but it was just a last call really for that. If there are people out there, agencies out there who think, oh, they should be on this, get them involved um, or, or let them know. Um, and then um, career pathways and complementary health. Um, this is a programme that we've developed um, and we're running in partnership with Pop-Up Spa and Retreats, who are kind of the lead organisation, which is technically me, <laughs> um, me and a few, um, a small constituted group. And we've, we've, because we've got a track record, we've been running for a while and we've done all sorts of health and wellbeing events in partnership with Flourish um, and um, we've run training and development in complementary health before to get help women and, and, and guys get back to work in these career pathways. We joined forces with an organization called Beauty in the Community who can work across Greater Manchester, based in the middle of Manchester at Meba, where some of you will have come to our how-to festival and other stuff recently. Um, we're working with them because they couldn't physically apply themselves at that point to deliver um, a combination of things it's it's basically as it says career pathways and complementary health well-being beauty we're basically doing some outreach events of which there'll be a couple in in Wigan um one of which we're hoping will be on the 22nd of September which is one of the things I'd love to talk to people about um as a kind of catch-all event to promote a number of programs create a health and well-being event and and invite time to grow people and others into showcase their wares and create a, a great event for people and so um, if you know people who are exploring career pathways in complementary health or they're running their own health and wellbeing social ventures, of which there are many in our network, then um, we'd really be interested to hear from them. And the plan with this is we're going to run four or five outreach events. The first one was at the How To Festival. We started talking about the programme and we started um, having some health and wellbeing sessions and tasters and all sorts of that um, we're hoping to run some similar stuff in Wigan in Salford in central Manchester in north Manchester and then between now and the end of the year we'll be both showcasing and scooping up all sorts of people to funnel them to the right opportunities and programs and um, help join the dots and bring some of the social entrepreneurs running health and well-being businesses together so that they can you know continue to work together, collaborate and do other things, just like I've, you know, just about to email um, Anne there and put her in touch with two other people on our other programme because they've got similar interests. Um, and I'm hoping that the, the three of them might be involved in some of our health and wellbeing events and most other stuff. So um, actual sessions and training looks like a combination of enterprise development training and social enterprise exploration. It looks like accredited training in beauty therapy and complementary therapies. There's a creative and digital and um, media skills development aspect. So we're basically we're interested to hear who's, who's interested in career pathways and complementary health and wellbeing, be the beauty related, health and wellbeing related, other more sort of talking therapies, mindfulness, anything and everything that's about boosting community health and complementary health and well-being um, there's a good chance we can create opportunities either in delivering stuff attending events or physically being part of training programs that we're running so that's just one to think about and um, i have emailed everybody we've we've been running podcasting training with vic turnbull at mind media uh, for a number of years here and there and we've um, got some training that we've been running on kind of an introduction to podcasting and then how to kind of plan and prepare and 
you know, get podcasts out there. And, you know, why would you do that? How do you do it? What's the best way to go about it? And um, so Rick's coming back on the 10th of September. It's a virtual session um, and people can book via Eventbrite via our Flourish um, or can they either book via Eventbrite or just come and see me I think I've given people on the Time to Grow programs uh, the Zoom link to that anyway um, and that's um, a morning session a couple of hours to just pin down you know how you might want to go about developing a particular podcast or on, on a series or a theme or a one-off um, so that's the kind of some back you know, backstory to different things going on um, that might be of interest to people. Um, what I was going to try and talk about with everybody here is just start to build on what we can do, you know, to make sure that the work that we're doing in Wigan is as impactful as it can be. And that um, not only are we creating a programme that's going to find a whole bunch of other new talent that we can support and develop and, and hopefully um, help them on their journey to social entrepreneurship and community business or whatever they want to do um, but that we can also ensure that other people that we're working with are involved and supported along the way so as I mentioned there's a new program coming I can say a bit more about we've got some health and well-being events that we want to factor in and marketplace stuff and the reason I kind of mentioned those if I just stop sharing this when we met and you'll those of you that are on here will remember um the last program day that we had we were very keen to make sure that we we looked at the what next you know it's very easy to run funded programs finish it off do your evaluation and walk away um, and that's not how flourish works and um, so we made sure that we mapped what people wanted to do what they could do what they got in their gift to do um, and we always work on kind of two or three pronged approach as kind of what can we do now with no money or no resources what could we do with you know some important resources and, and and whatever else and what could we do with a whole swag bag of resources and um, and so it means that we can get started with something and watch the snowball roll and see where and how we can build allegiances and tap into resources to make things happen so following those conversations that we had um we basically this is this i'm just pulled up what we talked about then and um, to be fair we did influence this a little bit because I know what we've got in our gift to do and we don't have to do this and people don't have to be involved in these things and we'll support you to discuss or connect people to do whatever the hell people want but we know that there's a possibility that Flourish can be involved with and some of the people in the group might want to create you know a local calendar of events marketplace stuff things where people can reconnect and come back together you know, so the idea is that we might create, you know, a monthly peer learning and development program where people can come back and deliver stuff, um, share knowledge or just connect virtually or physically. Um, and there's ways and means we can do that. You know, really, in the initial focus of this is around sort of maximising the talent that we've got. Um, showcasing and making sure people can see who's out there and what's going on and what people can connect to. Um, obviously Anne's just described some activities and some courses and sessions she's running. Aisha too's got um, uh, some money to be running health and wellbeing events in and around Wigan and particularly working with uh, women from diverse, ethnically diverse backgrounds but working with all women. Um, Alice Coran over at Remade has got resources to be running activities and upcycling stuff there. Wendy at Umbrella Arts are running constantly classes, programmes and activities for children and young people, families and people interested in, um, I guess, pottery, ceramics and arts. Um, Merrick Street, I've got a whole bunch of resources they brought in to work with people with dementia, um, to work with um, artists and makers. So there's heaps of stuff um, that people are doing and we need to make sure that people are aware of this. And um, Merrick Street are currently looking for somebody to take over from um, Alison, who's going on maternity leave. They're desperately trying to find <laughs> this kind of package of skills uh, they may or may not find in one person or happy to look at a couple of people who can take over uh, running and production of the workshop while Alison's on maternity leave and deliver some kind of creative craft and maker activities um, as well as sort of help manage some of the logistics around sort of production manufacture and distribution of the products that they that they sell so if you know anyone like that I'll just throw that one in there as a you know without these kinds of conversations and ways to share stuff People don't get the information. So, can I, sorry, can I just pop in though? Yeah. Um, 
I noticed that there was a, a new sort of pop-up shop in Ashton in Makerfield. Right. Um, uh, there, it's a couple um, who are setting up a pottery and sort of creative crafts. So mm -hmm. people can just, it, it's on a drop-in basis. And um, when you were talking about I, I saw the email from Eric Street. I've been, mm -hmm. I nipped down, but they weren't open. I'm not sure when they're open and when they're not. I have seen them open on random days. So it's something I'm going to pop in and just give them a heads up about see if they're interested because i know that i think they're both semi-retired and looking for something to do like that yeah it might. well i know um we'd gladly welcome them into some of our events and things and see who they are and connect them to stuff but um claire you best to get hold of her on email have have been over the summer um and she'll gladly sort of follow up and, and get involved I'll just get I'll just drop in and give them because I think I've got the card somewhere I'll give her the card and she can contact them if she, th if she thinks they fit yeah definitely um and I guess um in terms of us talking about this I know Tracy it was yourself and um Vicky so I spoke to Vicky at Belton Wigan this week great great other update we're bringing Vicky in to deliver work with us so the beauty of what the way we try to work is if we can support people to develop what they're doing if you know if their values, the way they deliver their stuff and different things align with what we do and we've got resources to be able to work with some people um, where we can offer opportunities, we will. And Vicky previously delivered some um, careers and employability support on, on the programme last year. She delivered some great creative marketing stuff. And so as part of our programmes, we, we're delivering um, careers and employability stuff and, and kind of a creative and digital skills program. Um, and Vicky's gonna come and help us deliver and do some of that um, the number of days over the next sort of six months or so. Um, and I know she and you, Tracy, kind of had this conversation. So does this, does this, you have vague recollections of this. We've, what we've done here is trying to map out the post-it notes that were, that were kind of put down. And um, I don't think there's anything more you want to say on this. Obviously from your angle, you're interested in the bigger picture and plugging this into the social enterprise network and everything else, which, which we're absolutely, you know, up for and, and making sure we do. I think what we know we've got in our gift to do is um, run some um, women-led events, I, you know, and run, that's not to say that we won't have guys come and do whatever, but they'll be kind of women-led and we'll make sure that we sort of promote the women in our groups to be delivering stuff. If you know of people or there are local social entrepreneurs who might want to come and do stuff um, or have got a great complimentary session or whatever they might want to add into this, more the merrier and um what we're thinking is um that you know we can look eventually so at the health and well-being event that we might well hoping to run on the 22nd of september we can create more thinking time to keep discussing this and perhaps map out what things might look like um so i don't know whether there's any any further reflections or thoughts from you on on, on this side of things but obviously there's a, there's a notion of a calendar we imagined Vicky, Morag, ourselves, people from your networks could create monthly events, virtually or physically, to do stuff. Um, and certainly in terms of the notion of a marketplace here, the idea is, I think, because Vicky's got networks in this area and, you know, we've not been able to physically have marketplaces for a while, or even if we create these virtually to make sure that they're accessible at all times, um, that we can create opportunities. And we just had a how-to festival that Anne, Anne was at. I might ask her to say a bit about that when we, we come to it shortly. But um, local calendar is one thing, you know, and we'll gladly support whatever you're doing, Tracy, and whatever women in our network want to do. Clearly, our local calendar is going to be um, the Time to Grow programme and other, other stuff around the edges. Um, and then um, the marketplace, we're hoping you know, it, it can be whatever we want, but we know we've got some resources and a plan to perhaps do some Christmas markets as a marketplace showcasing option where um, we, can, we can, through Merrick Street, create the space to be able to do this. And if you want to go beyond Merrick Street or we can tie this in with other stuff, more than happy. So any anything from yourself Tracy in, in terms of this or other things you know are going on or other resources or opportunities where you think um, it'd be helpful to think about yeah um, I know I think the council are thinking of doing the virtual markets again so I'll make sure I send you all the links for them mm -hmm. um, and then any business can can go along to those and um, it's a, a like a, a marketplace for the council staff to use and um, so it's like you say with Christmas that'd be an ideal 
position for some that were like Claire who make and sell gifts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, so that I know that's kind of in the pipeline. Right. Um, we are looking, like one of the ideas that we've got at the minute is doing some kind of social enterprise business expo just to raise the profile of social enterprises in the borough because I think quite a lot of like, the, the smaller grassroots don't get that opportunity really to kind of showcase the work that they do. And um, so having somewhere, we, we try to tag it onto the business expo, but we try and charge a fortune for tables and things. So we'll do our own. <laughs> so it might be tagged onto that. It might be a completely separate thing, but just a place where social enterprises can come and just showcase the work they do, have a stall each and kind of make it a bit more interactive like that. And are there any plans or dates on when that, that might might be, for example? <laughs> Not at the minute. Um, yeah. It's part of the Look Like This programme as part of our, one of our events that we've, we've kind, of put, like, kind of put in. So it just depends on the speed of that moving through to finance it. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of one of the definite things that we are looking at having is the Social Enterprise Expo. Yeah. Um, so that's hopefully within the next 12 months. Got you. Well, I mean, and kind of knowing that, kind of knowing a bit around the edges of this, I guess we thought, because um, we always do, rather than wait until yeah, the yeah, point, yeah. Um, if, yeah, we can, if we can be running this between yeah. now and the end of the year and scoop people up, get mm -hmm. some action happening and get some connectivity there, yeah. physically and virtually, then yeah. those people that we're supporting can hopefully plug into to future yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, where that's helpful for you guys and where you're able to either invest resources or time or share the links of what we're doing to yeah. encourage more people to, to get involved, yeah. to keep the snowball kind of building ready for wider mm -hmm. opportunities. Then, then, then all yeah, of but all, all of your correspondence and stuff we can send out and mail out via the Social Enterprise Network as well, because we've made that a formal list, mailing list now. Right. Um, so we've got that. So Dave's got, he's in charge of administering that. So anything that we need to kind of communicate with the wider sector can go out by that that way as well. Wow. Um, in terms of virtual calendar, I think that's a really good idea because there is so much going on for, for social enterprises and yeah. different opportunities. But I think having kind of a central place would be really good. But And I think can... I'm not, yeah, I don't think we won't necessarily run a virtual calendar for everyone else because it doesn't make sense. Why would you keep yeah. the knowledge yeah. in just the women's bit, if you will? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, I think all of this thinking, and, and I'll perhaps share, I'll, I'll send the video of this to you and to Dave and whoever that as part of the um, the planning sessions that you've got coming up, clearly you know the, thought, the thoughts that come forward. And I'm fairly sure that if we're kind of nurturing, encouraging people that we're working with to think about what are you running, what are the days, have you put it on this central calendar, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. then we can make sure that, that, that things tie in. Um, we'll certainly be planning a bunch of stuff each month you know, for the next six months or so. Some of that will be physically targeted at people on the Time to Grow programme and associated sort of networks. Um, and some of that will be sort of open stuff. And certainly the health and wellbeing events, the marketplace stuff that we're planning between now and the end of the year will be open to all. Um, and so we'll make sure we, we get all that out there. Um, and yeah, Vicky, I'm hoping to lean on. Vicky's been tasked with um, doing some of this. She's going to get, um, you know, paid to help plan and support and do a bit of outreach around some of this because mm -hmm. I know it's something that's close to her heart and she'll take this on and, and really run with it with us so yeah. so we're looking forward to that um and with, uh, with the sorry with the virtual calendar before you move on and um, when I said that uh, locality is supporting the event mm -hmm. for the social enterprise this time and um, there is kind of something that we want to kind of pull out is that communication side of it with the with the sector of how do they want to be communicated with because at the minute we don't have any kind of platforms or anything so that's one of the questions do they want like a website that can be managed either by Dave or by somebody else do they want like a, a managed platform website where they can put stuff do they want a calendar so would it be useful to have all of this stuff on one shared resource so that's part of our we're exploring those ideas at the next meeting so our, our feedback to you is what's come back from the wider sector what they need and it's how we kind of use it to kind of benefit this and i guess uh, you've got that facebook group haven't you that it's not mega active but there are um, people posting mm -hmm. things and i think there's ways of utilizing what exists whilst yeah. trying to build what's there isn't it yeah. um, and we'll obviously have you say a bit more when we come into some of the other things but any any thoughts on on this from conversations that we've had today and kind of where we're at with thinking at the moment 
Um, you're asking me what, if I've got any input, sorry. Yeah, well, really, yeah, on, on this sort of um, you know, monthly calendar and, and marketplace side things. If yeah. we take the health and wellbeing events and other bits aside, it's just um, thinking from a sort of local social entrepreneur's point of view, um, you know, might this be helpful? And are there things that you'd, you'd want to be, be part of or be... be, be... I, I certainly want to be part of the social enterprise market. Um, I was going off on a tangent in my head about um, which elements would be better for it, my Reiki Wellness Centre and which yeah. elements would be better for the Wigan Wellness Web. Yeah. Uh, on the, I think I'm really chomping at the bit to get um, face-to-face meetings up and running. Um, Zoom's great and everything like that, but to be totally honest, when I, I'll be on a Zoom meeting, I'll take loads of notes, I maybe pick up and do a couple of things, and then the rest of like, all these ideas that you get don't particularly get carried forward. Um, so I, I'll focus on one thing, maybe like the um, face-to-face meetings, and think I'll plan ahead to go to go along to those, and what yeah. can I use and what can I do. Yeah. Uh, even with the marketplace, that would be quite useful, because while I don't have a lot of physical items to sell it would be useful for, for promoting like gift vouchers um maybe like chakra stones and sets and things like that but little bits yeah we would and anticipate um, that we in any marketplace where possible we'd create a pop-up spa area so we would yeah. be able to offer treatments and things and a bit like we did you can offer treatments that's not a, that's not a problem or also to bring people in to offer treatments because mm you know we can we can do things like uh, let people try it this is what i mean it's the face-to-face things that i think generate more um return for me rather than the, the online yeah. yeah how i mean and i guess we had our just while we're on it i mean the how-to festival that we did i kind of put that together over the summer for a few reasons partly because i really wanted to have a kind of last blast let's get some people in a room before everyone disappears for the summer <laughs> not quite knowing how the winter's going to unfold um, I wanted uh, to make sure that we could connect people from different time to grow programs and up to our wider wider network because as much as a lot of people who've come on our programs know us for that actually for the last five years or more we've been doing other stuff with a with a wider network of established and evolving mm-hmm. social entrepreneurs and it's really important that we could connect people together for, for lots of different reasons um, and we were just glad that we were able to run that um, and, and it was a, it was a real world one do you want to just say a little bit about about that Anne and sort of you know I really enjoyed that it, it was a really good opportunity to meet up with like other people uh, offering similar things and offering additional um, the is it called Morbo or Mabba or something Mieber, like that yeah, yeah. Mieber. The setup there is really, really, really good for training and for, um, you know, like for, for passing on skills, but also really for finding out what else you could add on to your uh, your services, your offerings mm-hmm. <clears throat> that maybe you hadn't thought about um, that would fit in and, and complement it. Met some nice people, some useful people. Um, because it was held in Manchester and there were, you know, maybe I won't get customers from that, but what I did get was quite a lot of ideas. And I did get some good feedback from people who experienced the training, uh, the services. And I think I did an EFT. You did an EFT um, workshop and you did some treatments. I did a couple of Reiki treatments as well. So, um, yeah. It, and, I, personally, I thrive on the on the one to one feedback face to face. So I got some good feedback, which means that I can tweak my workshops a little bit, mm. and offered we got chance to offer the Reiki treatments. But it was a networking, the ability to chat to people and look and because mm. you look at a list of things that you can offer, and it doesn't always uh, register what it is. But when you're talking to somebody about what they do, then you think actually that's that's really good I, that's something i could maybe find out more about yeah. uh, particularly like accredited training opportunities yeah well you'd certainly be very welcome on the career pathways and complementary health i mean you're on it you're on a journey you, you know that we'd be mm-hmm. teaching you to suck eggs with some of it but i think at the same time um we can have a chat again about what you know what your needs are and make sure that this program that we're developing meets the needs of both those just entering it as well as those who have been in it for some time and the idea with it is that um will attract people who want to switch career and, and see what the options are for them in well-being, complementary health or whatever else. But we'll also, like you say, for those people who are doing different treatments, therapies or running things in a certain way, can think more broadly about, well, how else do I make this sustainable and viable? What does the world want right now? And, you know, should I train up? Should I do these other things to complement 
the other side of my work to make a bigger offer or I don't know, you know to, or to bring teams of people together to do certain things. And you, you know all this sometimes. So uh, looking forward to chatting again around um, involving you in that, either as a participant or somebody who benefits from certain things, certain aspects and can, can be part of the events and things. So, um, and it was just to finish off on this bit and saying that how to festival that we ran, we had 18 workshops led by women all about showcasing women change makers and what they do and realizing we're all here we're live and kicking we've got these ventures running stuff is happening don't think that it's not and to help people benefit from things so we had um, a health and well-being pathway so there was you know six sessions linked to health and well-being we had a social enterprise support pathway so we had several sessions on that anything from you know more ag delivering stuff around finance to one of our new directors the Tomkies helping people understand how to set up an online shop um, and all sorts in between um, and then we also had um, a creative and digital pathway which was helping people understand about comms marketing digital skills and, and um, either as standalone skills building or to complement the way they're running the social venture um, and people like Vicky from Belton Wigan and Claire Worthington uh, from the Village Web Company and others helped deliver some of those so the idea now following on from that is twofold one is let's run a mini one of those we won't call it how to festival just yet <coughs> excuse me we'll call it a health and well-being event or um, a marketplace um, and we'll 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 basically re not rerun but run aspects of that in in Merrick Street get local people there you know you guys all delivering stuff whatever is relevant and what's appropriate and invite local people um people linked to that center and area and the wider social enterprise world over else in to experience a day like that um, we're going to have to hit the ground running with promotion on this and i will get stuff ready for next week um, and we're planning i think even if we can get you know 20 to 30 up to 40 people along to the event on the 22nd of october um we'll we'll you know start to get that face-to-face -face interaction happening and have people benefit from stuff and the goal is to have um again showcasing stuff connecting people that networking but also promoting a whole range of our courses what's coming up and everything else that we've got going on and um, so 22nd of september is a date for that we'll, we'll come to um so that's, that's 22nd of october did you say right? 22nd of september September. Yeah, a few weeks time. We we're, we're going to run a few events, so I'll come back to kind of chat to people about sort of dates and things. But I think the idea is um, we've got uh, the twenty second of September as a health and well being event, where there'll be a, a handful of workshops, mainly with a health and well being focus, a few talks, a few demonstrations, and uh, some treatment options. Is kind of what we thought would happen, um, and then maybe running the second one that we do on a Saturday. So for example, we could do it on Saturday the 9th of October or Saturday the 16th of October. So we'll kind of test one midweek, um, nine till one or thereabouts, or 9.30 to 1.30, whatever, on the sept uh, 22nd of September, and then create some time to think about doing something uh, either bigger or on a weekend to see if that also affects sort of football numbers and who we can invite along. Um, so I will pop an email out to see what dates are best for people in October, but we're thinking Saturday the 9th or Saturday the 16th um, and just seeing what's what. Not, not the 16th for me, it's my son's wedding. <laughs> wow. Oh, well, that sorts that out then, 9th it is. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And then um, in theory, I don't know, I need to check with everyone else, I need to check with Claire and others, but we could do the Christmas markets either on Saturdays or, or on an evening. And we'll talk up to people about what their capacity is and what they're interested in. But, you know, things like Saturday the 20th of November, Saturday the 27th, or Saturday the 4th of December are potential options for a, a marketplace event. And it's trying to decide, are we doing one? Are we doing a couple? And, um, you know, I will pull Vicky and um, a bunch of others around the table just to kind of pin that down. But if people have got preferences or stuff or suggestions, um, keep talking to us about all that and we'll try and make it work as, as neatly as it can to make sure everybody that wants to be involved can be. Um, just one of the other things we talked about when we came together was these learning journeys. Um, the last Time to Grow programme we had was originally designed as a physical thing before COVID kicked in. And then we had to kind of shape it and not do this learning journey bit. Um, the learning journey, something we did on our first Time to Grow programme, where we took people to visit different social enterprises 
meet with social entrepreneurs leading stuff. In fact, Shelley um, was involved in that and actually spoke to a group of women on, on the program at the time about various things and, you know, create discussion. We had Shelley, we had uh, Rose Marley at the Sharp Project, we had a lady called Hannah at a social enterprise cafe called Milk and Honey, um, and a few of the a few other people were involved, sort of basically helping people who are starting out running social enterprises or who just want to know more um, about what the funny noise is that me? Am I going really echoey? Yeah, it's funny for me, the sound. I don't understand um, what's going on there. But anyway, I'll carry on and hope for the best. Um, what I was saying with these learning journeys is we've done them before. We know they work. We've done them pre-flourish. We've done them during these Time to Grow programmes. And then we've done them um, also um, as part of, of this. And the plan is that in this new Time to Grow programme that we're running, We've, we will visit, you know, obviously Merrick Street, um, we'll visit Remade that are now sort of opposite um, the station with Alice there. We'll visit Umbrella Arts, all being well. We could visit Sunshine House. We can visit, you know, basically the, the brick and, you know, different ventures that are led by all sorts of um, women across Wigan. We'll go and visit them. Uh, we'll go and, you know, pounce on Yellow Jigsaw. And, and, and the idea is... Um, there's other things that could evolve out of this, but certainly as part of the Time to Grow programme, it will be um, going to visit a particular social venture as a kind of learning and development opportunity for the people that go and visit, but also for that venture that we go and see, um, how can we help them? You know, thinking along the lines of things like common purpose or action learning sets and sort of experiential learning, we'll go visit these sites and soak up, you know, be inspired by what's going on there, but we'll also offer ourselves up as a kind of, you know, think tank focus group troubleshooting platform for the ventures that we go to visit so that they can thrash something out, or think something through or, you know, whatever's required. Or we might just sit and, you know, paint pots together. <laughs> it depends what's needed at that at that venue and at that space. And we'll each each experience will be kind of shaped according to who's running it where it is and what's going on there um, and people um, will, will sign up to these within the time to grow program but there's nothing stopping us creating these again um, other than you know time and resources and this is something that people can do independently anyway um, and we've got offers of opportunities we've got our time to grow program that we're talking this into so that's happening and then um, sort of I say last but not least we've been talking about it all the way along here but um, what the other thing that we talked around was around health and well-being events. And like I say, directly listening to what people said at that event really helped shape and make sure we ran um, a health and well-being sort of themed area within our how-to festival. Um, and I think we just, you know, we're going to peel that out and run it in Wigan. And we had Anne, we had Aisha too, we had Vicky, we had three or four women from Wigan running stuff there combinations of complementary health stuff things to do with mindfulness and mindful sewing I think Aisha too did um, and we also had um, you know a lady um, who's linked to Wigan actually who's an, um, uh, like an, an entrepreneur nurse or nurse entrepreneur talking about like asthma and um, so there's kind of practical um, health tips and benefits you know from statutory sort of communications right through to you know, mindfulness and well-being and that's what we'll aim to create with the events that we do um, in Wigan and, and like I say on 22nd um, is the date that we've got penciled in for the first one um, just to get running get people together um, start promoting these courses that are running to different whoever turns up basically and it should also create a little bit of thinking time to co-design the next batch of things that we want to do so we'll create space within that event to do a few things like we normally do you know there'll be um, some talks and tasters there'll be some um, demonstrations and treatments and we'll try and create um, an hour within the event or after it to look at what we're doing in October and in, you know into the, 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 the winter um, we can I know it's not your bag Anne, but for people who can't necessarily get to these things physically in Wigan or, um, or wherever, we can run virtual events and there is scope to run some virtual stuff. And um, typically we've run perhaps two virtual events a year um, with the resources and the sort of 
capacity that we've got that if more people wanted to get involved and do this we, we can do more so um, it's just something to think about and one of our areas of focus with some virtual stuff before the end of the year is building on the how-to festival and as much as we did it physically the plan now and um, with support with um, Shelley and Michaela and a few other people We'll be going back to people like Anne and Aisha too and Vicky and various others, um, Nora and others, to um, get them to do a mini webinar. They were obviously, thankfully, we were able to pay people for their sort of contributions, getting involved at the, the physical How To Festival. We're hoping as a kind of promotional tool and to support taking something online for a wider audience, um, we'll ask people to do like a mini 30 minute or so, 20, 30 minute webinar on how to whatever it was they did. And then we'll create this online how-to festival so that over the winter, if we do get cooped up, for example, or even if we don't, now that a lot of women especially can't and won't and it's tricky to <laughs> leave the house, or it's just nice not to sometimes, um, we will make sure that we've got that mix of online and offline stuff going on and um, we'll be back. I've been saying it for the last few weeks, but just needed to get a rest sort of over the summer before we plough into getting all that ready. So conscious I've talked a lot there um I wonder what you're making of it all Shelley because obviously you're coming to this from the the outside I just wondered whether you've got any thoughts or observations or questions on this that yeah I think it looks all really interesting um and it makes sense and you know the idea of doing things in a local area for um, collaborations and connection um and obviously you talked about talks and tasters which um which sounds really interesting. I, I, a question is, would the health and wellbeing events be deliberately targeting potential customers for the enterprises? Good question. And from our point of view, yes and no. So from, from for what Flourish have within our gift to promote this, you know, we promote it through our immediate network. So there are plenty of women leading voluntary community and social enterprise organisations who are, you know, burnt out, shattered, exhausted, or, you know, don't take enough time for self-care so from that point of view our immediate community is a potential customer for a lot of this stuff and I think making it affordable and accessible and having these little tasters gets people to come to this stuff that's part, one of the reasons why we've done it so in terms of women needing this stuff I would say yes we can get hold of them um, we promote things through you know Twitter and Facebook and where we can on Instagram and social media to a wider world um, I would say the majority of people who come kind of fit the demographic of, of, of who works with them. And that's, you know, very diverse women from the ages of about 25 to 85 and everything in between. Um, but I think we need to have a wider think about how we collectively promote what we're doing to ensure that the, the women that we work with networks can perhaps come along to this sort of stuff, or we, we can get out and promote this to people who can give a monkeys about social enterprise or the fact that it's women and just, you know like want to access a health and well-being event um, and also we've talked quite a bit but we don't do it and i would gladly welcome thought, further thoughts on this um, how we promote more to um, the business sector we have we've run stuff for barclays we've run stuff for NatWest, west we've run stuff for universities so there are audiences there that we can tap into to come to things it's just with the right message at the right time in the right place or targeting running a health and well-being event you know doing these things in Wigan <laughs> and then saying right you know would Barclays or this university or you know this council or this women's enterprise conference like to buy in you know whatever it is mm. a kind of health and well-being bolt on to whatever they may or may not be providing their staff customers delegates um we've experienced doing all of this is just focusing it down for, for the, the right people the right way at the right time but I'm hopeful that as we, we get to grow a few more health and well-being events than we have previously with a wider collective of people that other people can kind of pick up the baton and run with whatever they want want to do so they're not kind of you know constrained by what what we can kind of kind of can't do and if that's helpful Anne whether you have any <laughs> any thoughts on that because bottom line is you're looking for opportunities you're looking for customers you're looking for you know investment in what you're doing obviously i think the other thing just picking up on anne's point about um well the value of face-to-face -face meetings and about the, the value of face -face echo is that the, the just me echo is that? i'll just try and ignore it um it's just about turning chat into action and i'm sure i know you'll have been thinking about this Nicola. Mm -hmm. um but kind of formalizing 
or, or trying to create structures so that those chats aren't just chats that things can actually people can come together and, and do things following the sessions I think it's a really useful strand to have in there yeah definitely and I think we something we can keep up, sort of looking at as we go as I say things always take longer than you expect and it all comes down to who puts the best foot foot forward and, and cracks on with this stuff so um certainly you know we put this information down you know we created the space to have these conversations we've got this down in some, some sense of thoughts and then we've um picking it up and running with it once once we've got we know we've got some capacity and some resources to do so so that there's been a little bit of a lag between when this was put together in june and now but it's down to time money and holiday season so um yeah we're trying to make sure that we can you know continue this stuff and and hand over to people locally who want to do more sorry i'm going for it what were you saying yeah, just picking up <clears throat> what uh, shelly was saying in yourself these events and being part of the time to grow program <clears throat> have very much helped me to sort of look at what my core services are where my core business is and yes i've got lots of ideas and had lots of branches where i'd want to go off but what it helped me realize and talking to people and getting the support from them is like to just focus on a few and get them really well and then leave the other things until later because i was spreading myself a little bit too thin trying to do too much <clears throat> and it has helped focus and i've seen the benefit of that and it's sort of built up and, and building quite nicely so i think out of of anything else it's like stop have a rethink what you are intended to do let's get you doing that properly and then you can start adding on and, and spreading so and it's worked for me and it's helped do that bit so no it's a, it's a useful out. tip there and i guess because we do lots of different things as much as we kind of um that's a really good point that we often will get people to shape and focus and really build out what you know what's the core where's the money coming what's what can happen now and what do you need to kind of just put on the shelf for a while um this these kinds of things could be a distraction to some people who don't need them just yet or who um are going off on a tangent with something like this and i think people who decide to get involved in some of these things whether it's coming back to get involved in the time to grow programs either as, as part of networking as part of their own development or delivering something or trialing something and um, testing something out with a new group um, whether it's people getting involved in a learning journey because it's going to help them build their connections or promote something or whatever it might be um, and people get involved in health and well-being events as you say you know think about that core angle on this you know what why why would you bother getting involved how, how's it going to be helpful and meaningful to you and is it going to get you to you know some of your core goals or is it going to be a distraction and um, um or do you just need to lie down and let somebody go for you a treatment <laughs> you know so um absolutely you know it's a good good sort of um, point to think about there and we're not expecting everybody to get involved in all of this stuff it's it's down to what, what where it works where it's a neat fit and um where what we're doing isn't a neat fit there's a good chance that you know tracy and the team um, as part of the social Affairs network will be running other things over the coming year or two or three um to complement you know a lot of this stuff as well can i just mention an update nicola on something yeah, that they've been developed at the minute yeah, yeah. um so we've got a really big issue in wigan with corporate social responsibility in the the vcfd sector because what tends to happen is the big contractors have this money that they want to go and they go to the, the usual suspects, which are our bigger charities. And it's not it's not fairly split between everybody. It goes to the same ones every time. So uh, my colleague has been developing a community notice board. Mm. So what it's going to be is uh, the VCC sector, so that can include social enterprises as well, um, can actually put an advert up for what they need help with from a business and they advertise it and then the businesses and the contractors and most Wigan Council contractors now as part of community wealth building have to have some kind of local benefit built into contracts anyway so there's a lot of social corporate social responsibility coming back mm. and they can see these adverts and decide what it is that they want to do but they can also put adverts up about what they can offer as well so it's a way of kind of linking the business sector with the the VCSE sector and how they can support best for each other so I'm just thinking for your event mm. uh, it could be that you could advertise on the notice board and um, the events coming up and see if any businesses want to support but also the the, the organizations as well if they need any specific things that businesses Definitely. might be able to support them yeah. with. So, great idea and I think we'll definitely follow up with 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 you on that and um yeah initially whenever you're making relationships with people you know they just want to 
you know, it's all about building trust and experience and something and checking it's relevant for you and that kind of thing. And so at least through running these sorts of events, people from different companies could come down and understand what does the world of health and wellbeing look like um, in, in Wigan in terms of social enterprise? What kinds of services are out there? Are there ways that their, um, you know, HR teams or um, managers might be able to um, mm-hmm. procure services or better understand what yeah. options are out there and um we can, you know, if we know that there are companies who might come along to this sort of thing, we can mm-hmm. tailor, sort of tailor, you know, tailor some of the talks accordingly, um, yeah. or you know, put on tailored tailored events anyway. We must, you know, yeah, we'll have a little think about that. Fantastic. Well, I'm pleased to say, you know, we'll be wrapping up shortly, but I've just seen, you know, the system does work, doesn't it, Anne? I don't know if you've seen while I've been talking. I did an e-introduction to Anne to somebody on another Time to Grow program. She's just got back in touch, um, and um, you know you know ready to roll there with with another collaboration so um hopefully as we go i will be following up with people getting this recording out to people who i know would want it to be here and perhaps can't get in the room today so that we make sure that people are included and you know ultimately these things happen because somebody makes them happen and often that's that's me um i'm i'm really glad that you know when we ran the the how-to festival lately we've got we've built a really good team around us so that actually even though I couldn't be there, COVID, sun and all of the rest of it, um, I had to back off. The, the show went on beautifully. And, you know, that's a real testament to us, you know, A, having super bright people and I know we can just get on with it. Um, things being well organised and um, us continuing to commit to growing that team so that more can happen. So I'm really pleased we've got Shelley on board to, to help with some of this. Her main role really is going to be helping me sort of um, shape and design and deliver a whole range of programs that I mentioned earlier, as well as think about new opportunities, different sort of markets that, that we might want to develop um, programs, events and activities within and, and look at how we sort of build our um, networks to do that. So um, hopefully that's been useful insight for, for you, Shelley, to see <laughs> some of the things we're planning in Wigan. And um, Trace has had opportunity to sort of uh, bring people up to speed with what's going on in and around Wigan in terms of social enterprise and the evolved evolving sort of support now through the, the, the council and, and what was already evolving through the network. And it's great to have Anne on who will A, be involved in some of these events coming forward, but giving some good insights into, you know, what social entrepreneurs need, how they're benefiting. And, and really one of those messages, Anne, is, you know, physical events make all the difference. So we've got a commitment to those um, in Wigan, like I say, in Manchester, um, in Stockport, eventually and um, I don't know people know it's not I think it's official knowledge fully yet but um our bid was successful with uh this action stations concept where four stations in Greater Manchester have been given up to community use and proposals were requested and anyway I put this business case together to take on Heat and Chapel Station and um, it was successful so um I'm you know I'm pleased that we'll have you know Manchester base um in Meba um for the you know, foreseeable future, um, based in partnership with Merritt Street in Wigan and an evolving base um, in Stockport as well. So um, I just think as much as there's a lot of place-based activity that goes on in and around, and, and that's kind of a, a theme that's not going to go away, connecting people across the boroughs, and especially where social enterprises need all sorts of football and, and are, are appropriate for all sorts of people, business and whatever, the more we can sort of help people connect beyond the, the boroughs, the better as well sometimes, depending on what they're running and who it's aimed at, obviously. But um, a lot of the women that we support both do place-based, locally-based stuff, as well as um, you know wider work. And often, in terms of social enterprise business models, you sometimes have got to go out of your locality to bring home the bacon to be able to deliver what you want to do on your doorstep. So um, that all helps as part of that too, hopefully. Cool. Well, anybody, any other sort of thoughts at, um, at this point point in terms of or any questions and I'll, I'll make sure that I follow up and share this video with everybody from the time to grow and highlight some people I would really hope might try and get involved in a couple of these events and anyone else is welcome but I'm just thinking in terms of health and well-being and sort of angles currently but any any other thoughts? not particularly yeah. I just wanted to I'm going to send you an email um I've been offering one session a week free to frontline workers yeah. Um, and I will be doing to the end of the year. 
it was chock a block booked out like up to the end of sort of October, but bookings have fallen off. And I'm thinking there's going to be November and December. So I'll send you the details because you're linked in with the uh, women's support group. So anybody who's been working through mm. uh, people um, can book in for a, a free session. Okay. So I'll send you that detail there. Thanks, Anne. We'll get that shared. Um, and yes, we'll be in touch with some of these dates as they. I'm sorry the 22nd is kind of going to creep up on us fast. And, and from my point of view, even if we get, to, you know, 20 people at that event um, to get moving, to get knowledge sharing and to get co-designing the next bit, um, I'm fine with that. If, the, if we get more, all the better. Um, we, we can certainly take 30 to 40, I think. We're going to use two rooms um, at Merrick Street on that day uh, we'll use the two rooms the, the well-being space that Claire's been using and the kind of dance opal dance area um, I, I doubt we'll have my pop-up gazebo outdoors I think it might be a bit chilly but you never know if we get that in in summer we might get the tent back up um, and we'll see how we go there but um, we'll, we'll logistics will all make sense a little bit near the time I think the key priority is to, is to be promoting it so in the next few days some content will emerge that starts to um, showcase the fact that this is happening and Eventbrite link will go up and we'll just um, get get it moving and see see who we can get down there and then um, get promoting what, promoting what we're doing both in terms of you know treatments and health and well-being services locally but also in terms of the courses like I mentioned so we'll see how we do and my hope um, is that we'll have um, beauty in the I can't say beauty in the community come over as well so I'm hoping Anne that we might have yourself do some sort of talk or whatever it is that you feel you want to share at that point be involved in, in, in um, treatments like we had at the how to and we'll have like yourself and um, a couple of the members of the team from um, beauty in the community like we had at the how to festival um, offering a mixture of complementary therapies and some uh, beauty treatments so that um, we'll just see who who's interested in that as well. No, definitely. I'm interested for both the workshop and some treatments. So I'll be there. Thank you. And I think um, it'd be good to test the space. You know, we, we wanted to test Merrick Street more than we perhaps have been able to in this year. So if we test the space, that's uh, all part of the fun. <laughs> and we can see what, what's best to run, you know, going forward as well. Cool. Lovely. Well, thank you for being part of the chat here and thinking things through with us. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here and make sure that gets shared with people. And then um, I'm just getting, like I say, you forget where everything is, don't you? Stop recording.